And we are gathered to give you glory. Oh, Lord God, we pray, oh, Lord God, that your light shines in us, oh, Lord God. We pray, oh, Lord God, that we reverence you, oh, Lord, with truth, oh, Lord God, and with spirit, oh, Lord God. We pray, oh, Lord God, that you come and inhabit our praise. We pray that you make our praise glorious, oh, Lord God, because that's why we are here. We're here to worship you. We're here to praise you, oh, Lord. We're here to love you, oh, Lord. We're here to serve you, oh, Lord God. We serve you and you alone. We're here to worship you and you alone, oh, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord, for this time of fellowship, oh, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, for the hope that binds us all together, Lord God, the hope of salvation, Lord God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, oh, Lord, for the salvation that you've granted us and the knowledge of it, oh, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that we have been granted abundance, oh, Lord God, entrance into your kingdom, oh, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, for your love that wraps us around, oh, Lord God, and comforts us, oh, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, for your presence, oh, Lord. Thank you for being here with us now, oh, Lord God. We pray that you bless the reading of your word and open our hearts, oh, Lord God, to receive, oh, Lord. And we thank you, Father God, this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Today's scripture reading comes from Psalm 93. So I'll read. The Lord reigneth. He is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed with strength. Wherewith he hath girded himself. The, word, the world also is established that it cannot be moved. Thy throne is established of old. Thou art from everlasting. The floods have lifted up, O Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their waves. The Lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waters. Yea, than the mighty waves of the sea. Thy testimonies are very sure. Holiness becometh thine house, O Lord, forever. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Hallelujah. Good morning, church. Amen. Let's rise on our feet and let's give God praise that he, de he, de he deserves. Let's stand up and give God all our praise. He deserves all our praise. It is a privilege to be here in the house of the Lord that we don't take it lightly. Let us lift up our voices and we're going to praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. your name we are complete in you we are complete in you in you we praise your name we praise your name we are complete in you we are complete in you in you we bless your name we bless your name we bless your name, for upon us is your glory and your grace, and upon us is your beauty and your love, for upon us is your glory and your grace, and upon us is your beauty. From glory to glory, from glory to glory, to glory. You, are you are taking us. I am perfect in you. I am perfect, I am perfect in you. In you, I bless your name. I bless your name. I'm complete in you. I am complete in you. In you. We bless your name. I bless your name. I'm perfect in you. Hallelujah. I am perfect in you. In you. I bless your name. I bless your name. I'm complete in you. Hallelujah. I am complete in you. I praise your name. 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 I praise your name
praise your name. For upon me is your glory and your grace. And upon me, and upon me is your beauty, is your beauty and your love. Upon me, for upon me is your glory and your grace. And upon me, and upon me is your beauty. Is your beauty and your love from glory from glory to glory to glory you are taking me you are taking me from glory from glory to glory to glory you are taking me you are taking me from glory to glory to glory to glory from glory to glory to glory you are taking me you are taking me from glory to glory to glory from glory to glory to glory you are taking me you are taking he's me. taking me higher hallelujah He's taking me higher. He's taking me higher. He's taking me higher. From glory to glory. He's taking me higher. taking us, oh Lord, Thank from glory to glory, Hallelujah. from grace to grace, oh Lord. Yes. Father, we give you praise. Thank Hallelujah. You. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 He is a way maker. Amen. He's a promise keeper. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he's here with us. Hallelujah. 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 You are here. Moving in our midst, I worship you, I worship you, you are here, working in this place, I worship you, I worship you, let's sing that again, you are here. 
Go ahead and worship him. He's worthy, he's worthy. He's a way maker. Yes, he is. Lord, we worship, we worship your name. He's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy. He's worthy. We give it all to you. Because he's at the center of it all. Jesus at the center of it all. Lord, we worship you. Lift your voice and give him praise. Give him praise, give him praise, give him praise. Because he's worthy of the glory. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. Thank you, Father. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Mm. At the center of it all, it's you that I see. It's you that I see. At the center of it all. At the center of it all, it's you that I see. It's you. It's you that I see. Tell him at the center of it all. At the center of it all. It's you. It's you that I see. It's only you. It's you that I see. 
Oh, at the center of it all, at the center, at the center of it all, it's you, it's you that I see, it's you, it's you that I see, there is power, there is power, there is power in your name, miracles happen, miracles happen in your name. As we lift, as we lift our voice in praise, it's you that I see, it's you, it's you that I see. There is power, there is power, there is power in your name. Miracles happen, miracles happen in your name. And as we lift our voice in praise, as we lift our voice in praise, it's you, it's you that I see, it's you, it's you that I see. At the center of it all, at the center, at the center of it all, with your hands lifted, it's you that I see, tell me it's you, it's you that I see. Oh. At the center of it all, it's you. It's you that I see. It's you. It's you that I see. Oh, there is power, power in His name. There is power in Your name. Miracles happen in His name. Miracles happen in Your name. And as we lift our voice in praise, as we lift our voice. It's you that I see. It's you. It's you that I see. You are big, bigger than the biggest. You are stronger, stronger than the strongest. You are higher, higher than the highest. You are greater, greater than the greatest. You are bigger, you are bigger, bigger than the biggest. You are stronger, stronger than the strongest. Higher, you are higher, higher than the highest. And you're greater, you are greater, greater than the biggest. You are bigger, bigger than the biggest. You're stronger, you are stronger, stronger than the strongest. You're higher, you are higher, higher than the highest. You're greater, you are greater. One more time, he's bigger, you are stronger, bigger than the biggest. You're stronger, you are stronger, stronger than the you're higher, you are higher, yes, you're higher, higher than the highest. You're greater, you are greater, greater call it Jesus. It's you that we see. It's you that we see. It's you. 
it's you that we see at the center of it all. At the center, at the center of it all. It's only him we see. It's you that we see. It's you. It's you that we see. There is power in your name. There is power in your name. Miracles happen in your name. Miracles happen in your name. As we lift the voice in praise. As we lift the voice in praise. It's you that I see. It's you. It's you that I see. There is power. Worship the King of Glory. Yeah, 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 yeah
it's you that I see. Only you that we see. It's you that I see. We see Jesus. It's you that I see. It's you that we see. It's you that I see. Only you. It's you that I see. Only you, Lord. It's you that I see. Only you. It's you. Only you, Lord. It's you that I see. Yes, Lord. It's you that I Oh, we're glad we have your name, Jesus. Thank you for your name. We love you, Lord. Thank you for that name. There's power in your name. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we know if there is power in the name of Jesus Christ. And we know that miracles happen in the name of Jesus Christ. And we exalt you, Heavenly Father. It's only you we seek, Heavenly Father. And we give you all the glory. It's you that we see in every situation. Yes, Lord. Lord, that we bow before Thank your presence you. in adoration. You, it's you that we see Thank in this you, country. Hallelujah. And we say your name be yes, glorified. Yes, it's yes, you Lord. that we yes, see Lord. in our families. Yes, Lord. Lord, that we worship hey, you, Lord. It's Lord. you that we yes, see Lord. in our lives. Yes, and yes, we Lord. exalt your holy hey, name. Lord. And we declare, let all that is within us praise your yes, holy Lord. name. It's only you we see yes, in every Lord. situation. Hallelujah. And we remain focused on you, Jehovah. Yes, Lord, Lord, we say, be exalted, you, be glorified. You, you are God and you are real unto us. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Hallelujah. Heavenly Father. Hallelujah. Be exalted, Jehovah. In Jesus' name we have declared. Amen. Before we end this praise and worship, we want to sing and thank God for what God is doing in this country. For the miraculous that the Lord is doing in this United States of America. It's only him we are seeing. And so we will lift up our voices and sing and glorify him and say, Jesus Christ is you that we see. It's only you we will continue seeing in every situation as we celebrate this day, declaring that we lift up our voice and sing. Let us sing.
bit slower. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, thou who has, thou who has brought us thus far on the way, thou who has by thy might led us into the light. Keep us. Keep us. Father, we stand on your word, Lord, and true to our God, we stand firm on you, Heavenly Father. In this country, we declare that God, in God we trust, and it's in you we will continuously trust and will not waver. And we say thank you over and over. In Jesus' name, we have declared, amen. You may be seated before Pastor Michael comes. We will just hear a little bit of the history. Just three minutes. Let's go. Amen. Amen. So I just want to share a brief history of Black History Month, the month that we are observing this Sunday. So it was first celebrated during the second week of February in 1926 to coincide with the birthdays of Abraham Lincoln, which is February 12th and the abolitionist slash editor Frederick Douglass. Um, his birthday is February 14th. And in 1976, as part of the nation's bicentennial, the week was expanded to a month. So the founder or creator of Black History Month was Carter G. Woodson, also known as the godfather of the Negro History Month, later called African American History Month. It is now recognized as Black American or Black History Month. So Woods, Woodson's devotion to showcasing the contributions of black Americans bore fruit in 1926 when he launched Negro History Week. And in the second week of February, to co coincide again with the birthdays of Lincoln and Frederick Douglass, his concept was later expanded, as you said, into Black History Month. However, Woodson died from a heart attack at the age of 74 in 1950. His legacy lives on every February when schools across the nation study black American history empowering black Americans and educating others on the achievements of black Americans. And throughout the course of his life, Woodson published many books on black history, including uh, Century of Negro Migration, published 1918, The Education of the Negro Prior to 1861, which is published 1919, The History of the Negro Church, published 1921, and The Negro in Our History, published in 1922. Carter G. Woodson was a scholar his education to his dedication to celebrating the historic contributions of black people led to the establishment of Black History Month marked every February since 1976. And Woodson fervently believed that black people should be proud of their heritage and all Americans should understand the largely overlooked achievements of black Americans. Carter G. Woodson was patiently dedicated to the cause of having black Americans recognized for the many wondrous efforts and inventions that they gave to help build America. So we as a nation of Americans should all reach back and discover what great and wonderful contributions those before us made for America and, and the world as a whole. Which brings us 
to this question. With all that goes on today, can we say that we are patiently dedicated to Christ our Lord and Savior? Can we look at how far we've come and still hold on to the hope that we have not yet seen? As the word says, we, we have plenty of hope that we can see, but are we holding on to Christ and do we have to look forward to the rest of the future, knowing how far he's brought us already? Thank you all for listening. I will ask that the ushers come. Yes, sir. Sorry. Bishop Sumner, excuse me. Thank you. Thank you. We're thankful our communion is just as empty as this. Are we actually patiently awaiting our Savior? Our Savior. It's time for our communion. I'll give us where to go on and join us. Get the elements that you use to join us in communion. As we all stand, as the elements are passed to you, I just want you to believe it. Believe the word of God, Jesus Christ, our son of God. And it is finished. It is finished, it is finished, and it is finished. So believe it and walk by faith and not by sight. It's not the things you see that matter. It's what God says that matters. Because it's all finished. He never fails. Let's stand up as the elements, as, as we get the elements, please let's go on and stand. As the elements are passed to you, go on and stand. Those of you at home, go on and join us. Join us and believe that it is finished. Jesus said it, that settles it. Go on and hold the bread and let's do the declaration together. I hold this bread before you, Lord, as a reminder of your body, which was broken for me. I thank you for bearing all of my diseases and pain. I number myself among the healed. My body is the tabernacle of God, not the house of disease. As I eat this bread in faith, I remember you. And by your suffering, I am healed today. Let's go on and call the cup and believe God that it is already finished. Let's make the declaration together. I call this cup of wine before you, Lord. As a reminder of your blood, which was shed for me. Thank you for paying the price for all my sins. You bore my guilt and shame. I now have dignity. I number myself among the righteous. I am redeemed. As I drink this cup in faith, I remember you. By your blood, I am clean today. Let's go on and raise our hands in thanksgiving unto God. Thank you, Jesus. I do remember you. Thank you for my healing. Thank you for my salvation. Thank you that I am in fellowship with you. Thank you that I am one with my brothers and sisters. Thank you for your life that is in us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you. Your life is in us, and so we are not panicking. We are not worried. We are not stressed, Lord. Your life is in us, and we know that we will live long and fulfill lives here on this earth in this land of the living. We will not die. We will live and declare your goodness. We will praise you continuously. We will not be bedridden. Your life is in us, and therefore we have rejected and refused any cancer, any high blood pressure, any stroke, any, any paralysis of any kind. Your life is in us. We believe it, Lord. We are partakers of the body and of the blood of Jesus Christ. And we say thank you over and over. Your life is indeed in us. Be exalted and be glorified. In Jesus' name we have declared. Amen. Pastor Michael. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. All the time. Amen. It's another blessed opportunity for us to sow in the vineyard of the Lord. Amen. 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 A privilege and honor. I would like us to turn to Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs 3. I'm going to read from verse 5 to 10. 5 to 10. I want to read a little bit more. Proverbs 3, 5 to 10. Are you there? Proverbs 3, 5 to 10. I'll read. It says, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not on thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Shall be health to thy marrow and marrow to thy bones. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thy increase. So shall the barns be filled, the plenty and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. Amen. Honor the Lord. You honor him by giving him the best. Honor him by putting him first. You honor him with your substance. What cost your sweat? You honor him with your heart. Because where your money is, your heart is. Amen? 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 Amen. Amen. You know, you might come up with a lot of excuses by not giving off your time. But it says here, trust in the Lord that he will take care of all your needs. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, not with your head. Trust in the Lord Lean not on your own understanding. Trust in the Lord. With everything you have. And he will surprise you. You cannot outgive God. When you put anything in his hands, he will multiply it. The seed you sow in the vineyard is the best seed. Now we have an opportunity to be blessed. You see, he just wants to bless us. He's looking for an excuse to bless us. He has everything. He owns everything. There's no, nothing he needs from you. It can take only one person to take care of the needs of the church. Well, he wants to bless us. By you giving off your tithe, you're showing your stewardship. You're saying, God, I'm available. You can trust me with more. Are you ready to be blessed? Are you ready to be blessed? Yeah. Well, if you are, stand. Your tithe is one tenth of all that God has given unto you. And of course, you have to sow in order for you to reap. So you give off your offering also. Lift up your offering and your tithe as we profess the offering confession of faith together. Heavenly Father, we profess this day unto you that we have come into the inheritance which you swore to give us. We are in the land which you have provided for us in Jesus Christ, the kingdom of Almighty God. We were sinners serving Satan. He was our God. But we called upon the name of Jesus, and you heard our cry, and delivered us from the power of darkness, and translated us into the kingdom of your dear Son. Jesus, as our Lord and High Priest, we bring the first fruits of our income to you. 
that you may worship the Lord our God with them. Father, we rejoice in all the good which you have given to us in our household. We have heard your voice and have done according to all that you have commanded us. Now, Father, as you look down from your holy habitation from heaven to bless us as you said in your word, we believe that we now receive those blessings according to your word. This is our confession of faith. In Jesus' name, amen. I will bless you, Lord, and give you glory. Oh, I will bless your name and give you glory. I can imagine our ancestors would hear something like this. And it would, they would be hearing good news. They were hearing information about where to go. They were hearing information about the salvation that they are leaving this place where they are enslaved. And they would be hearing that and they would start singing. Over my head. I hear music in the air over my head. I hear music in the
stand as we pray. Hallelujah. Father, we just say thank you for your tangible, manifested presence in this place that we are at liberty and free to express our gratitude to you. We are so grateful, so thankful for the privilege we have to come together in different forms of praise and worship to you, the audience of one. Lord, we don't take it for granted. We thank you again and again for your holy word, your holy written word. We are saying thank you for the great mighty one. That's the Holy Spirit that dwells in us and abides in us. We say thank you. You sent him to us to be our teacher, to be our guide, to direct us and encourage us and strengthen us and be our standby. We say thank you. And we trust even right now that he will unveil that which is your mind, O Lord, the word of truth, that he is going to cause us to see Yeshua as never before. And we continually covet earnestly that his gifts will operate in this house, in our lives, especially the working of miracles. We are saying thank you for the gifts of healing. We are saying thank you. No one in this place that has any sickness in their body that will go with the same in the name of Yeshua. We thank you, oh my God, that indeed... We are going to receive more than ever before the word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discerning our spirits, and we thank you for your prophetic utterance coming forth even in this place as never before. And we will see manifestations of those prophetic words. We say it is done, and we vow to give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. In Yeshua's name we pray. Everyone shout amen. You may be seated. The Lord is indeed awesome. Yeah. Amen. You know, every time we come, I'm always uh, looking out to see what he is about to do today. <laughs> and he never misses, you know. It's so beautiful just to experience how he manifests his glory in our lives. Amen. It's so beautiful. Amen. You all are looking so gorgeous. All those wonderful, shining outfits you have on, I love them. And a lot of you, I won't be able to fit into them. But, <laughs> but I, I rejoice just seeing you all looking so beautiful and so great. Amen, amen. And the men, you, the same thing, the men are looking gorgeous. You all are looking great. I, I love that which... Um, my beloved son at the back over there. You know, women can wear that one too. Yeah. <laughs> we can wear that one. That's beautiful. Yeah, you, 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 you. Shiny. Uh, my beloved daughter over here calls them the, 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 the glittery ones, right? Yeah, the blim blim, the blim blim. I love those blim blim, yeah. And Reverend Chinelo is wearing the blim blim. You all are wearing the blim blim. Yeah. I like the bling bling. <laughs> Some of them are just so gorgeous beyond anything I can think of. I just want to say you all looking gorgeous. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And uh, I see my beloved daughter at the very back over there. That's uh, Dickiness uh, Favor. <laughs> working in wholeness. Amen. That's right. She's working in wholeness. Amen. Amen. Tell someone next to you you're in for a miracle. Hallelujah. And I confess the Lordship of Yeshua over all things in this house. And right now with the authority and the power that I have bestowed upon me, I block every interference in this house. And in the lives of every family that is represented in this house. Amen. Amen. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Someone here is expecting a unique miracle. Amen. How many of you are expecting? Amen. Amen. You will receive a new experience 
from the Holy Ghost today as never before. Amen. Amen. So we are seated in the heavenly places. Tell the person next to you, you're seated in the heavenly places. Well, that's what the word of God says, right? So moving forward, always tell everyone that comes in, tell them you are seated in the heavenly places. We are going to continue our teaching on living and working in the supernatural. Galatians 5.25 says, if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. That's where we got our title, living and walking in the supernatural. That should be our way of life. Every one of us that's born again, we believe in Yeshua. Everyone is a blessing. And we are blessed and we are blessing to bless someone else. Mm? We are born to make a difference. We are game changers. We are born to add value to our family. We are born to add value to our village, to our city, to our nation. We are miracles of God. We are to multiply ourselves everywhere we are. We are not to get blessed to just sit and enjoy the blessing by ourselves. No. We are to be a blessing to others. Genesis 12, 2 says, And I, God told Abraham this, And I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. So every believer in Yeshua is a seed of Abraham. And the promise that God gave to Abraham we just read. And I want to show that to you in Galatians 3.29. And if you be... Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs, according to the promise. So tell someone next to you, you are blessed to be a blessing. That's right. We are blessed to be a blessing. And it didn't say we bless people only when they are nice to us. Or when they act right, whatever that acting right means. We are blessed to be a blessing. Let me tell you, church, true blessing upon a child of God is when you become a point of reference of someone else being blessed, spiritually or otherwise. People should say, because of you, I am blessed. All of us should be a blessing to someone. Amen. God said to Abraham, I will bless you so you can become a blessing. This is why Abraham took time to train his children the ways of God with the knowledge of God's purpose for their lives. We are the seed of Abraham. We are blessed. We are set free so we can set others free. We have been impacted by the gospel of Yeshua so we can impact others' lives. We are exalted so we can exalt others. In our families, where we are married into, for those that are married, we are supposed to be blessing in our married cities and villages. Huh? We are to add values in those places. Somebody <laughs> listening to me. I had to chew on this myself. <laughs> if your family remains the same, if your city remains the same, then we are not adding value. Huh? Mm -hmm. 
Write this down. Know that you are at war. W-A-R. Know that you are enlisted as soldier in God's kingdom. We are at war. When we receive Christ as our Lord and Savior, we immediately enlisted <laughs> into the army of God. Second Timothy tells us that in chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. Second Timothy, chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. Let's read that together. Yeah, that should come on the screen also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangled himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who had chosen him to be a soldier. We are warred. And we are soldiers of Christ. Tell the person next to you, you are at war. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> as soldiers of Christ. So if we are at war, and we know we are at war because the Bible tells us, we must have weapons to go to war. Not only that, the weapons should be ready. Hmm? So, though we are spirit beings, but we live in the physical body. We live in this flesh called B-O-D-Y. We know we cannot go into war without a spiritual weapon because we are not fighting flesh and blood. Mm? So, our weapon must be spiritual. So, if you and I are required to have weapon, you must then know your weapon. You must know that the weapon is suitable to use. You must know how to use your weapon. Somebody hearing me? Every believer, believer must know their weapon and know how to use their weapon. Very, very, very critical. We cannot be ignorant of the need to have weapon that's suitable for the war that we are going through in this life. Matthew twenty-two twenty-nine, 29, Jesus answered and said unto them, You do err not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. You do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. We cannot afford to stay ignorant, church. We need to rise up and embrace the word of God, know who we are in Christ, know what our position is in Christ. That scripture, Matthew 22, 29, that we just read says, Believers, when you are ignorant of the word of God for you, you will not walk in the power of God. Say this with me. I will not be ignorant, I will not be ignorant of the word of God. Of the word of God. I, will I will continue to position myself to receive revelation knowledge of the word of God, I will remain strong in the Lord and in the power of his might in Jesus' name. Somebody shout amen. So knowing that we are at war, knowing also that we are great soldiers, then being soldiers means that we have the weapon that must be deployed 24-7. Did you hear that? Not sometimes. The weapon must be ready to be deployed, actually stay deployed. <laughs> that means that you and I must be acquainted with our weapon so we can use our weapon effectively, 
and successfully at all times. So we're going to tell each other, tell one another, you need to get to know your weapon. That's right. Turn your Bibles with me to Genesis chapter 1. We're going to begin to see the weapon. And I want you to write down what the weapon is to you. It should be very clear as we go through the scriptures. And I believe that the Holy Spirit is going to minister to every one of us about the weapon that is critical in this life. Because we are spirit beings and we war against spirit beings. But in the meantime, we are in this world. And we are seen as B-O-D-Y. Though our real self is the spirit part of us. In the beginning, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Read with me. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. You know, being a child of God, we should imitate our heavenly father. How many of you think that should be the case? Yeah. Okay. So to imitate our heavenly father, we have to do things his ways. Not create our own way. We have to do whatever he did through the scripture. We see what he's done. What we just read, we see what he has done. There are many ways of doing things in life, but there's always only that one way that guarantees great success. And that is doing things God's way. The scripture tells us in Isaiah chapter 55. Verses 8 and 9, Isaiah chapter 55, 8 and 9. Let's read that together. <clears throat> For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Right, So we have to find out God's ways and imitate his ways, not our own thoughts. So when God was confronted with darkness, going back to that Genesis chapter 1, when he was confronted with darkness, he did not call for the assemblies. He did not call for anyone. He did something that must be done and we need to imitate him. He addressed that darkness with a weapon that was right there at his disposal. The spirit came and he spoke the word. The spirit moved and God spoke to the situation. What was that situation? Darkness. And he said, let there be light. And immediately there was light. He confronted the situation by the word, spoken word, not thinking about it. How many of you get to the place where you're just thinking? <laughs> okay. You know, you're thinking about what is happening around you. I don't know. Am I alone? You're thinking about what's happening to you. And before you know it, the thought starts going to a higher level. And the higher level is ugly. But you see yourself still thinking and just thinking about it. And your mouth is not moving. You're not saying anything, but you are thinking. That's why the Bible says, cast down. Cast down. Those imagination. If you don't do something, it keeps on. Growing, getting bigger. Before you know it, fear is coming. Somebody hearing me? God the Father didn't do that. Immediately there was darkness. He did what? He opened his mouth and he said, let there be light. And immediately there was light. That's what we have to be doing. 
John chapter 1. I want you to write down some somewhere in your notes, in your Bible, W-O-R-D. Make it real bold. Let it be in your face. Okay? In the beginning, John chapter 1, we're going to read verses 1 through 3. Join me in reading because faith comes by you hearing yourself. Okay? Let's go ahead and read. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Stop right there for a while. We see the word three times in one verse. In the beginning was W-O-R-D, word. And then the W-O-R-D was with God. And again, the W-O-R-D is God. And the word was God in the beginning. And the word is God today. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Now, verse 2, let's go. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. Now stop right there. Who is the him? God. All things were made by, by God, by him. And without who? God was not anything made that was made. Now, everywhere we see him in that verse 3, let's put in God. Together, everyone join me. All things were made by God. And without God was not anything made that was made. Know that all things were made by the word. Okay? Now, let's do verse 3 again now. We're going to put in word. Let's go. All things were made by word. And without word was not anything made that was made. Did you guys get that? Are you feeling that? Everything was made by word. Everything that was made by word. Know that all things were made by the word. The word of God was the man all that governed life and creation. Write it down somewhere. So the word governed what? Everything living and everything created. W-R-D. You cannot unmake what you did not make. You cannot unmake anyone, someone you did not make. You do not have the power to do so. Without him, there is nothing that was made. Pay attention to that word. Let's go to Colossians chapter 1. We're going to read verses 16 and 17. Okay, join me. Uh, let's put that on the screen. So all those that are somewhere in the hospital or at home that are watching can join us. Let's go. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things we are created by him and for him, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Now we're going to go back and everywhere we see him put in word. Okay? Let's go back and do that again. Verse 16. Let's begin. For by word were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things we are created by word and for word, and he is before all things, and by word all things consist. Did you guys get that? By the word all things, visible or invisible, we are created by word, by him. And for him, 
That is how powerful the word is. That is why Yeshua did not argue or get into any logic or any sentiment when Satan came to tempt him. In Luke chapter 4, verses 1 through 13, you can read that later. Each time he simply referred the devil by the word. He said, it is written. And Satan was quoting the scripture. But he did quote the scripture out of context all throughout the time. That means that you and I must know the word. So that we can be able to resist the devil by the word. So that we can pray accordingly by the word. The devil knows the word. But he will twist it. So you need to know what to quote. What to pray by the word. In case you are not familiar with this, and I'll tell you today, every believer is on Satan's hit list to attack. Hmm? And the only way to combat the enemy is knowing the scriptures and referring the enemy to what is written. The word of God is our defense weapon. The word of God is our offensive weapon. To win every war, always, that the enemy may bring. How many of you know that we are victorious? Yes. How many of you know we are more than conquerors? Yes. But we have to enforce who we are by the word. The enemy is relentless. So we must be more <laughs> relentless, whatever that is. Amen. We cannot afford to lay back. Let's go to Hebrews 11. Let's continue with the word. Verse 3. Through faith, we understand that the walls were framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. So again, we see in Hebrews 11.3 that the walls we are framed by the word of God. How many of you know your own world, what you're seeing right now about your life is based on the spoken word? Maybe spoken word from when you were little by somebody, your mom, your dad, or your whoever, but everything that we have experienced in life is based on the spoken word. Whether we know it or not, it's, that's just what it is. And we have shown it in the word. John chapter 1 verse 14. It tells us that Yeshua is the word that became flesh. The word that made all things and without him was not anything made that was made. And then we have another scripture that tells us about the power in the word. The word being God who is Yeshua. Philippians 2 verses 10 and 11. Let's go there. Philippians 2 verses 10 and 11. That at the name of Yeshua, every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Yeshua is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That are the name of Yeshua every need. That includes everything that you don't like. Every sickness, every disease, every lack, every poverty, every challenges, whatever it is. Are the name of Yeshua, they must do what? Bow. Today we sang a wonderful song, the last praise and worship song. My God, it was so powerful. How many of you experienced the power of God with just that mention of his name? Yes. At the name of Jesus, every knee, every knee 
every knee should bow. And we enforce it by our spoken word. It's not thinking about every, every cancer or every disease should bow at the name of Jesus. No, no. We have to enforce it by our spoken word. You bow, you disease, you bow, you sickness, you bow, you lack, you bow, you confusion, you bow, you anger, you bow, you worry, you bow, you, you enforce it by your spoken word. Say this with me, I command, I command every sin and unseen evil forces, I command every powers of darkness, and every principality, and every disease, and every sickness, and every form of cancer, every form of heart attacks, you bow to the power in the name of Yeshua. Shout hallelujah. Now verse 11 in that Philippians chapter 2, we see the word confess. And that every tongue should confess. That word confess means they will acknowledge and they will comply. Did you hear what I'm just I'm saying? Yes. Okay, so every evil, ugly spirit, as we open our mouth and confess, they must acknowledge the name of Yeshua. And they must comply to bow. Did you all hear that? Now, I want you to say this with me. In the name of Yeshua, name of Yeshua I, command I command every evil forces, every evil forces of the heavens, heavens in, the earth, in the earth, under the sea, under the sea things invisible and invisible, bow your knees, acknowledge the lordship of Yeshua, Comply and come into alignment by the power in Jesus' name. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now all things we are made and all things exist by the word. Everything. They exist by the word. Whether the principalities, whether dominions, all things we are made by the W-O-R-D. So, when we embark on confessing and praying the word, we are given advantage. And we have edge over all things visible and invisible over all creation. This has to become a rema to you. Satan does not want you to hear or listen to the word. Have you taken note of how you can watch movies for hours and hours and hours and you don't get tired and you can get on that social media for hours and be sending links? I, I told one of, the, one of the folks in the church, I said, I see on the Facebook, I see you always sending uh, links, and I don't see links about anything about uh, you are uh, reading from the Bible or even the, the, the service in the church, but you are sending all these links because they come and they pop up on my Facebook. Uh, but this is not one person. A whole lot of believers, they can get on that Facebook and the the. The, the Twitter, the, um, what are the other ones? I, I Instagram and, and uh, how was the other one? YouTube. And they, uh, they can watch and watch, but just say, let's pray. Just a few seconds. You get tired. How many of you know what I'm saying? It's uh, the phone will ring, and then you stop praying, and then go to the phone. We don't want to wait until there's problem to hit before we travel and groan. We don't want to do that anymore. 2024 moving forward is different. Yeah. Amateurs pray the crisis before 
will come. So you push back the crisis. Somebody hearing me? Yes. You push it back. Only those that are mature will do that. Our mature will not pray until when the problem starts. Then there's fear. Then there's panic. Then there's anxiety. We don't want to do that. We want to be those mature cr Christians. How many of you will say, I'm mature? Just say it, believe it by faith. You are a mature believer. There's something I have noticed. When you are a mature believer, you pray the preventive war prayers. You know how the doctors will tell you uh, there are things you can do to prevent things from happening? That's, that's a natural thing that came from the supernatural. Did you know that? We can actually pray the preventive war prayers. Pray as if the rain is falling now and let it become part of your lifestyle. You don't want the rain to fall, but the rain is about to fall right now. But in the natural, there's no rain. But you pray that way. That causes the enemy to back off. Did you notice what happened to Yeshua when the enemy came to tempt him? How many times? Three times? Then the Bible says the enemy let out for a season. For a season. What does that mean? That the enemy will go back to reinforce and come right back. And did the enemy come right back to him? Yes. That's why when he was at the Garden of Gethsemane, he prayed and said, Father, if it be your will, wait a minute, that's why you were born. Mama told you, the scripture told you, and you even spoke it, and now the enemy was attacking heavy duty. And what did he have to do? He had to go back and forth praying the same thing. And even pleading with his disciples, why don't you just stay with me? Why don't you join me to pray even for one hour? If that happened to Yeshua, how much more you and I? Is somebody hearing me? Go to Genesis chapter 3. Let me show you something. Verses 1 through 3. This is classic what the enemy does. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, had God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said, he always twists the word, by the way. He always does. Verse 2. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. I want to stress on the fact that the enemy, serpent, is always subtle, and it has been that way from the beginning. So, but we also need to know that we are dealing with an unseen enemy. We are at war with an unseen enemy, but he uses B-O-D-Y. He uses people. How many of you understand what I'm saying? Because the unseen enemy is spirit also. And he will use B-O-D-Y to operate on this earth. So he may use people that are very close to you. People around you. They may not know that the enemy is using them. They may not mean to yield themselves to the enemy. And that's why we cannot fight people. We are at war with the spirit that's using them. And we need to differentiate these things. How many of you understand that? Just shout amen. I understand. Amen. Now let's go to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. Verse 
Stay with me, stay with me, church, stay with me. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, verse 12, but we wrestle against what? Principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Note that the scripture says we are not wrestling flesh and blood. So it's not about your in-laws. It's not about your best friend that you think that just um, messed up with you. No, 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 no. It's not about your husband or your wife. It's not about your children. It's about the principalities. We are war with an enemy that's real, but without body. Your real enemy is a person without body. Mm? But fights you with people with body. Do you get that? The real enemy is a person without body. But we'll fight you with persons with body. So we must discern and be very sensitive. That's why we title this Walking and Living in the Spirit. We are supernatural. We have to operate as those that have understanding that we are supernatural. The enemy hides behind flesh. In other words, hides behind B-O-D-Y. But we're not fighting the flesh and blood. Somebody hear, uh, hearing me? This is so important when you address people in the church, in your home. Because the enemy can use people that are just under your nose. So you can run. If you run away from her, anywhere you go, the enemy will use somebody there to still attack you. You can run. You have to understand how to war. You get divorced today, marry somebody else. I am telling you, you will have to learn to war, otherwise you'll divorce again. I'm telling you, you'll divorce again. So we have to have a permanent solution. We must deal with the root cause of the problem. We must stop dealing with the symptoms and rather attack the root cause of the problem. The spirits are the principalities that we are warring against. They are powers. They are rulers of darkness of this world. Now, darkness of this world, these are dominating spirits. They want to dominate everything in your life. And then when we deal with spiritual wickedness in high places, these spirits, they deal with the governors, those in authority in the cities and the nations. And that's why we pray for our nations. Very critical. This is why we pray for those in authority. Their decisions affect people. You have some countries. Let, let, let me talk about, you know, where I was born. In African countries. You have minerals. You have oil. Uranium. Gold. You have... Oh, Father, where do I start? And they are all being used by European, Western countries. And the people there are poor. Whose fault is it? It's not the Euro European countries. It's not, it's not the Western world. <sighs> no wonder the, the word of God says my people pray for. So we should not be blaming any country. We should arise, find out what they, what they got, and get it, and then possess our possession. Yeah. Somebody hearing me? Yeah. When you don't put values on your own minerals, you don't put values on your own raw materials in your city, in your country, somebody else puts value in them and gives you some little dollar, and then will siphon everything that God has blessed you with. 
Lord, have mercy upon Africa. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon all the blacks around the world. Amen. We override every evil forces and spiritual wickedness in high places Amen. that come to the political arena to destroy God's people. But the church has to arise. I say the church has to arise. Marabasand. Are you angry, righteously angry? Like I am? Yeah, we're going to pray. So. <laughs> ay, 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 yeah. Enough is enough. Huh? I am not about quoting the scripture and it's not seen in my life. And what I want this church to do is go beyond your little village and your little town. Let's talk about nations. God has given us nations. Everywhere we go, there should be a change. Mm? I was very happy when we began to go to Philippines. You know, uh, Minister Catherine will attest to this, that the district in the south we began to go there. In Philippines, a whole lot of um, major, I'll say probably over 80, are Catholic, Roman Catholics. Okay. So this particular area, we, we, when we began to go there 10 years ago or 11 years ago, the evangelicals and the Pentecostals did not have much say in the area. Those in authority, 100% of them were all Roman Catholics. But that year, the Lord did something that I did not realize until after a few years we started going there. The mayor and the, the husband was also a governor at the time, and the mayor, I mean, just embraced us. Miracles took place and embraced me so much that at the time, he, she said, I want to build a house for you so that when you come, you will not stay in a hotel. Right? And I didn't really take that. I, I just thought, you know, she just said something. But in my heart, I knew that she always loved me. And the next year we went there, she actually built a house and called me to come and see the place I can move in. <laughs> First, I was just uh, <laughs> very amazed. <laughs> God gave us favor. So I... I think my, my baby over here pulled me by the side and said, uh, Bishop, you go there, you will not sleep there because she is going to stay in your room all night. And, you know, you. So she put in that righteous fear on me. So I told her, I said, I said, uh, you know, I have guests that I came with. I have other people from the church that came with me. I don't want to leave them in the hotel by themselves because we prayed. So that's how I got out of that. <laughs> well, you know, Mayor Sally, if you're watching, I love you. <laughs> so, so, but I, I have a story to tell you. Now, I'm talking about us going beyond just our li little village and um, city. We are responsible for nations. What did, what did the Bible call them? Go back to Ephesians uh, 6. Th I'm talking about rulers of the darkness of this world, and against spiritual in, in places of authorities. Political. Okay? So, that year, I, I, I asked uh, the, you know, our senior pastor there, I said, get in touch with Mayor um, Sally. We are going to have a um, um, you know, big rally and um, conference and all that, but I want the pastors. We always have meetings with pastors. I want the pastors. We had over 200 pastors. I want them and those in authority there for us to have a meeting together and have uh, the conference. So they opened up. The mayor made it happen. And that, for the first time in the history of the south part of Philippines. And now it became a, a yearly thing. Now these pastors can go to those in authority. Actually, they seek out for them to give them now counsel and talk with them. 
And they called me to pray for them here in America. It was never done. Never, never done. As a matter of fact, I, I talked to our pastor there and I said, we are coming and a new regime has taken over. I said, we are going there and they already have it in place. Why? Because we are the ones in control of what is happening in nations. We have the power by our spoken word against the spiritual wickedness in high places. Somebody hearing me? One time we, 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 we got to Philippines again. I'm using Philippines. We got to Philippines at the airport, and we had all the medical, medical items. And actually, I was very... I was very ignorant. I didn't know that now we have to have paperwork from those in authority. I just gave them name. I just told them, the mayor there and the governor there, they know we are coming. And they believed us. And we were not checked. And we didn't pay a dime. But all the things that we carry, we should have paid so much money. Remember that year? What am I saying? Don't ignore the spiritual wickedness in high places, and we can dismantle that. Amen. But you've got to know the authority and the power that you and I have in the name of Yeshua, who is the word. Stand on your feet. We're going to declare and decree using the personal declaration, I testify. Can we have that on the, on the screen for everyone? Uh, Mr. Udo, please help me. Hallelujah. We are going to declare this testimony of what we know is our position in Christ and the power that we possess in Christ. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Let's begin. Everyone stand with me. I want you to open your mouth and declare it. And when we finish, just get into prayer. Let's go. This day, I testify that I am what the word of God says that I am. I testify that I am the redeemed of the Lord. And I say so. My family is redeemed. And I say so. I testify that I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I and my household will serve the Lord. I testify that I am blessed coming in and blessed going out. I and my entire family will serve the Lord. I testify that no weapon formed against us will ever prosper. This includes in our jobs, finances, health, in our relationships, in Jesus' name. I testify that I am the beloved of the Lord, my household, and my entire family. We know that we are the beloved of the Lord. I testify that I am prosperous and in good health. I and my family, we will live a long and fulfilled life in this land of the living. And we will live to declare the goodness of the Lord. In this land of the living, I testify that my soul prospers in the things of God. As my soul prospers, all that I lay my hands to do in accordance to the will of God prospers in Jesus' name. Amen. I testify that I am an overcomer and a victor, not a victim. I am more than a conqueror. Through Christ Jesus, I am above only. I am above every wicked spirit, every principality, and every part of darkness. I am above only, and my family members are above only. We are seated in Christ Jesus in heavenly places. Amen. I testify that I do not have to the spirit of fear, but of power of love and of a sound mind in Jesus' name. This day, I testify 
that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me by the grace of God. I testify that I will remain a doer of the word of God and I will apply the word of God that I receive in my life. In Jesus' name, I testify that I have the wisdom of God and I have the mind of Christ. I am led by the Holy Spirit of God. I testify that I believe right, I think right, I speak right in accordance to God's word. And I experience earthquake miracles in my life to the glory of God. Amen. 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 Shalom, shalom, everyone. Just please stay in attitude of prayer. Come on over here. Come over here. You, you come over here. And I have a voice. OCN, Word of God to the world.